All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Well, I got one of you. There we go, that's what I'm waiting on. Glad to be in the house of the Lord, if you will, standing with me all over the building. I was going to be, I was going to be mean and wait until Rick sat down and then have everybody stand, but I thought I'll just, I'll just go ahead and, because I'm getting to the age now where I don't want to sit down and immediately get right back up, so I'm feeling it. Staying you good? All right. I'm sitting. He's sitting. He's sitting. Psalms, Psalm 1 talks about that. We got people coming in. Let them know it's okay. All right. We want to welcome our online crowd tonight, our online audience. We've got people all over the country who is watching us tonight. Uh, we ask you just to, if you're on Facebook at least, just to, uh, to comment and say where you're at and welcome you here to Harvest Church. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you, God, for another night, a privilege to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you, God, for Harvest Church. I thank you, God, that we have got this opportunity to, to just learn your word, to dive in deep, God, and realize what it means to us. And, Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would just anoint our time together. Father, I ask you, Jesus, that you would just continue to touch those who are under the weather, Father, those that are out tonight because they're sick. God, I ask you, Lord, that you'll touch them, that you'll heal them, that you'll raise them up. Father, I ask you, God, that you'll just give blessings to them, God. I ask you, Father, that you'll move us, move on us tonight, God, with your presence and your anointing. And, God, we love you. We praise you for everything that you're doing and what you're going to do. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And somebody shout amen. Amen. And amen. You can be seated. We're going to be, um, <clears throat> I'm going to wait till everybody sits down so nobody falls. Are you up sit down. You know, the Bible does say that rebellion is as the sin of... <laughs> um, th- I-, I wanted to wait till everybody sit down because tonight is going to be a short night. <laughs> see, I told you. So that, that means... See there? But don't get too happy because next week we're going to pay for it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to... We're gonna uh, we're gonna dive in. We got we got a few uh, videos to watch. And um, Steve, if you will, will you be my my light man tonight? We're getting ready to start that here in just a second. Uh, last week, uh, previously, we we learned that the Israeli society is multifaceted. Y'all remember that? Um, a product of many different uh, cultures, traditions. Uh, reflected in the country today, we talked about how uh, if you thought about what does what does Israel, what do you think about Israel? The you know we were thinking bombs and desert and camels and and then we watched videos where they're much more alive than what we've ever given credit for. Um, so as we as we know from the recent discussions that we've had previous lessons. Uh, This vibrant social framework exists within a state that embraces both Jewish and democratic uh, values. Uh, Jewish values are a key component of how uh, Israelis engage with their life in Israel and how in many, many ways the basis for how Israeli citizens engage with global society. So we're going to start off tonight with, with a short video And this video is about how Jewish values have influenced Israeli society and what that means for the world at large. And then after this video, we'll uh, we'll take a few minutes and 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 chat. So this I think this one is going to be the longest video so far. So just sit back and and watch this. When people think about Israel, they think about war, or religion, or even falafel. But to me, when I think about Israel, I think of the triumph of the human spirit. Israelis, surrounded by enemies, have turned the desert with hardly any natural resources 
into a flourishing, productive and caring society. My name is Tal Ben Shahar, and although I was born and bred in Israel, I spent much of my life living and working abroad. Working in Asia, studying in the US and the UK, and touring the world playing professional squash. I received my PhD from Harvard, and after completing my studies, I went on to teach there. He teaches Harvard University's most popular class, positive psychology. Please welcome to the show. Tal Ben Shahar. Tal. It was very exciting to know that what I was thinking about, writing about, and teaching was having an impact. In spite of all this, I decided to move back to Israel. The main reason for this move, I would say, is family. The Israel I came back to was not the Israel I left. I was amazed at what happened here during the 14 years I was away. Israel had transformed. Israel had not only joined the 21st century. In many ways, it was now leading the way. When you look at the NASDAQ, companies are listed from around the world. There's one country, though, that truly stands out, and that is Israel. And Israel is the fastest growing, one of the most dynamic entrepreneurial and innovation-based economies on the planet. The sky is the limit for inventors in Israel. Israel has been a remarkable achiever in terms of technological innovation. Israel has developed some of um, the world's leading technology. Even if you don't live in Israel, chances are you have something that was made here. If you just look at it on a, on a daily basis, how much stuff do you use in your daily life that has its origins in Israel, it's, it's rather remarkable. Many of uh, the microprocessors invented by Intel were designed in Israel. Nowhere in the world outside of Silicon Valley will you find more technology startups. People come from all over the world to look for Israeli technology. Warren Buffett shelled out more than $4 billion for Iskar Metalworking, the largest purchase the legendary investor has made outside the United States. I, I understand that their facilities are incredible, but I would expect that. Intel developed here, HP has a center here, Google is very successful here, Microsoft as well as the research and development. If you actually do the math, Microsoft is almost as much an Israeli company as we are a U.S. company. This country has been such a beta site or a laboratory for solving uh, both national and international problems since its inception. The technology coming out of Israel is being used to connect the world, green the planet, save lives, and have fun. Wow! Wow! For instance, Kinect lets me use my body as the controller. This very cool technology was developed in Israel and then bought by Microsoft. The workout. In a way, Israel is known to everybody as a center of innovation, as a place where you can find more innovation than anywhere else in the world per capita. If you look at countries that are represented in the stock exchanges, the ranking today is number one, of course, the United States. Number two is China. And number three is Israel. The US, China, Israel. Looking at our size, how is it that Israel, with its seven million people, has the third largest group of companies traded in New York? This is an amazing fact for a tiny country to actually eclipse all the nations of Europe in the creativity of its entrepreneurial leadership. We were living here in the middle of the desert we really had no choice. We had to come with something in order to farm in this area. One of the main reasons behind the Israelis' ability to lead in innovation, to bring about progress, is the resilience in the face of crucibles like these. Necessity is the mother of invention. You know, when you look around, you got sand all over the place. And you gotta start becoming creative. If you look at just about every Israeli home, school, park, or farm, you'll notice something interesting. An innovative idea that makes the most of Israel's very limited water supply. 
drip irrigation. People think that this is just a plain the hose with a hole in it. This is not the case. Behind each hole there's this very sophisticated dripper that uh, is pressure compensated, that is self-cleaning, that has filters in it. There's a lot of technology and research and development and innovation, so it's certainly not just a hole in a pipe. With drip irrigation, farmers can grow 40% more crops by using only half the regular amount of water. This has enabled Israelis to go from surviving in a desert to thriving as a leading exporter of fresh fruit and vegetables all around the world. You know, when I travel and I see our uh, irrigation systems in remote places, and I see how it helps people to grow more with less, I'm very proud uh, of it. At any given time, over 100 million people are confined to wheelchairs. And although wheelchairs have become more sophisticated, they've really been the only option. Amit Gopher has the chutzpah to believe that he can change all that. The initial idea was to make a device that will enable people to function from morning to night without the need of using wheelchair. From medical myths to medical marvels, we head to Jerusalem to meet a paraplegic who's walking tall. It's a breakthrough you're going to have to see for yourself. You are witnessing a miracle. The man you see standing up, walking, even climbing stairs, has been paralyzed for more than 20 years. I never, I think about I walk. Only the dream I walk. When I see the impact, of the device on a person, it gives me great pleasure. Oh, it's the greatest thing. Cruising down the hallway. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's like it's been the best thing and since the accident. This country has become a country with all its imperfections that sees as part of its purpose looking out for other people. The Bible says so. The Torah. The Jewish uh, tradition talks about guiding and helping others. That's the Jewish DNA. That's Israeli hardwiring. Also, religious or secular makes no difference. I want to do something good, and not just for myself, but I wanted to do something good for Israel, for the society. And, uh, you know, it feels strange, but I think that it's also for the world. You know, we're far from perfect, but we're in the game, okay? We're, we're in there fighting and helping and trying. And we're creating cures for cancer and we're creating new, you know, cool technology and we're trying to feed the world. We're trying to solve dependence on, uh, on oil. It, it really goes to the heart of what being an Israeli is about. This is what Israel is all about. And to be back here, to be able to share it all with my family, this is what life is all about. So, that is, uh, that's Israel. And, um, I... We just, we, Pastor Kim and I just got back this morning from San Antonio, Texas at a uh, Christians United for Israel uh, leadership summit. And the things that we heard, it was almost information overload for us. Uh, but to hear these, these innovators and Israeli uh, engineers coming up on the platform and talking about all the things that have been happening that they have, um, they did a, a, an outpatient with a needle, did an outpatient surgery for a lady that had breast cancer in knocked it out outpatient that's what's happening and what Israel does is for the world not just for them and their friends Israel Israel has aid that we're going to be talking about here in a little bit that they will offer free heart surgery for for kids and and it's done every week, 
and during the week you will see Muslims, Pakistanians, the ones who are trained to hate and kill them, you will see them walk across the border to go to the hospital to get care from Israel just to be made whole, if you will, to go back across the border to learn to hate them. But they still do it. So we watched this video. So let's talk about a couple of things. What did, what's something that, that caught your, your attention? Any, anybody? Technology and medicine, med, uh, medical. the medical. Yes, ma'am. That's a big one. How they make deserts into into farmland. That's that's huge. Uh, found out, you know, a lot of of Israel is desert, but they have a bobsled team. Figure that one out. All right. So, and you know, and here here we are looking at at Israel back pre nineteen forty eight. And it was a desert. There was nothing that was living. Uh, you don't grow crops in the middle of a desert. However, this is what your Bible says. It says that we'll flourish. And God gave them the, the, the in, intuitiveness to make a drip system. Who? How many of you really thought, now some of you, you, you working men, don't raise your hand because I'm sure you wouldn't raise it in the first place. But how many of you thought that those drip pipes was just holes in a water hose? I did. So, I mean, I, I just thought that's how it worked. But to have an actual filter that actually gives them clean water. There's going to be, there's going to be some things we're going to talk about tonight that's it's, it's mind-blowing, and we're still going to get out of here before 730. But just to, just to know that, and I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but one of the things that they talked about this week was that they have got they have figured out how they can take air and turn it into drinking water. Yeah. All right? We don't do that, but they do. All right? And then they supply it to to the poor and they supply it to the rich. It's all innovation, and that's what we're we're talking and I was sitting there and I was thinking, okay, so so what does all this have to do with the Bible? Well, if we go back to lesson one, you don't have to turn it there, but you'll remember there was a story where God grabbed a hold of a man by the name of Abram. And he told him, he said, Abram, I want you to leave your country, and if you'll, do, if you'll do it and you'll obey me, I will bless you. Not only you, but your descendants. This is mind-blowing. This is God blessing Israel and what it means for us today in 2023. Okay? So what, what new information? Uh, it's, it's always fun to watch the people who, who are already in the know. We, we, we heard a, a conversation with, with Pastor Hagee's son. He, he was speaking to us, and he's now the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church. And he said, you know, the, the two words that always get me, got me in trouble was these words. I know. That always gets you in trouble. He said his first time he was, he, was, he was going to be preaching at Cornerstone Church, he wrote his notes for, it was like 30, 45 days he had in advance. He was writing his notes. He was getting everything ready. He walks in, gives his, his sermon to his dad for him to, to look at it, make sure everything was good. He said, and he, he would give Matt a little bit of advice, and Matt would look back at him, and he'd say, I know. Now, that he's talking to a man who's, who's built a church from nothing to over 10,000 people, and he was, this is his first time preaching, and he was telling that guy, I know. So he was looking at this message, and he said, um, okay, Matt, go get me your red pen. So he got his red pen, and he would, and just started writing, and he said he'd get a page, and he would just throw it. And he said when he finally got finished after maybe 35, 40 pages, there was one and a half paragraphs that was not red inked. And his dad said, the rest of this paper that's all over in red, red inked, he said, when you get you out of the sermon and put him in the sermon, 
He said, and all I could say was, I know. <laughs> so it's fascinating to, to be around people and, and we watch videos like this and, and see stuff and they, and they already know it. I love it. So, so is there anybody in here that has that, that anything that you had no idea that it came from Israel that you just saw? Anything that just flash drives. Flash drives. Anybody ever use flash drives as little things in your computer? Microprocessors. Things that really we use every day because they're in your phone. How many of you have a cell phone? That's all of you. You've got something from Israel. Okay? Anything else that popped out? So this should be, this, this is going along with last week's lesson because last week we went from thinking that if you went over there you're going to be riding a camel and had to dodge Scud missiles to now we're leading in technology. The growth of it. The growth. Anybody else? That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. So in, in this video, uh, if you notice Daniel Gordas, he said that this country has become a country with all of its imperfections that sees as part of its purpose looking out for other people. That line floored me. When I watch that, because I'm trying, I compared the nation of Israel to what the church does. How does the church react? Okay, and I'm going to read that again. He said, this country has become a country with all of its imperfections that sees as part of its purpose looking out for other people. Not just their own. Not just their clique. Not just their girls. They're boys, they're their buddies, but for everybody. All right? Israeli corporate and military innovation, social entrepreneurship, and its third sector, which is the non governmental organizations, uh, are influenced and informed by the core tenets of Judaism. Join with the ideas of democracy, uh, such as the Jewish concept of tikkun olam. I think that's in your, it's in your book. Uh, we're not going to spend, I don't think we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Tikkun Olam. I'm actually going to show it to you what it is. It simply means repairing the world. And this is one of the most profound statements that they said. They said, if you save one life, it is as if you saved the world. Now that could be spiritual. That's why when somebody comes down here to the altar and they give their life to Jesus Christ... We talk about heaven's throwing a party. That's why I get excited when we get to pull out the baptismal pool. Because if we can just, if we can give them, save one life, everything that we do is worth it. Everything that we do is worth it. Men's ministry is worth it. Women's ministry is worth it. Uh, children's ministry, youth ministry, our church, our Wednesday night Bible study, everything that we do, Monday night, everything is worth it if we get one soul. Amen? Amen. So the Jewish concept uh, is tikkun olam, and it's basically wanting to let the world be a better place. This is in keeping with the Jewish tradition, uh, which is an implication that the world should be improved upon. They wake up every day, how can I make the world better? How many of you woke up this morning thinking that? What can I do to make this world a better place? You know, I, one of the rabbis said something, and it just it blew me away the other day. He was talking about a rabbi that lived in, uh, I think it was in Pennsylvania, or maybe it was in Boston. But he got... A personal invite to go to the White House to visit. This is back when President Reagan was there. A personal, you know, if you got a, an invite, and I don't care if you're a donkey or an elephant, but if you got an invite from the president, whether you voted for him, liked him or not, you know what you would do? You'd go. Yeah. 
All right. <clears throat> so, so this this the President Reagan invites this rabbi to go to the White House to visit him. He turned him down. You know why he turned him down? He said, President, I would love to go there and visit you, but the day that you've asked me to do this, I'm writing birthday cards for 8, 9, and 10-year-olds. But if any time that you're in my neck of the woods here and wherever it was that he lived, he said, you feel free to just drop in my house at any time. And, we, and, the, and the point was he was thinking, why would you just skip out on the president to write birthday cards to nine, eight, nine, and ten-year-olds. And he began to explain that your birthday, you see, there's some of us that we like to celebrate birthdays, and there's some of us that forget that we even have a birthday. But your birthday is a reminder that God had a plan for you in this earth. And that is important. So he was letting eight, nine, and ten-year-olds know at that age how important that they are. And to him, that was more important than talking to the most powerful man in the world. So I was thinking, man, we ought to just have this massive birthday party every month for everybody and their birthdays. Hallelujah. Just so it reminds you that you have a purpose there's a need for you. Well, go ahead. You can go ahead and clap with Sharon. That is important. All right. So, we've talked about tikkun olam. Uh, there's only one word that you're even, that you're having to write all night long, and that is this one. With just four peace treaties with countries in the region, Israel is surrounded by hostile states throughout the Middle East. All, every single one of them, have actively worked for its destruction at one time or another. I highlighted the four peace treaties they have with Egypt, Jordan, Bahrain, and the UAE. Those are highlighted. I don't think that's in your book, but it's on here. All right, so those are the four peace treaties that they've got. And you'll see that, and here's Israel right here beside of Jordan, all right, that's the only, these four are the only peace treaties that they've got. Everybody else is out to absolutely kill them. And Jordan, that's a cold peace treaty they've got. And our president was just over there shaking hands with those guys and inviting the leadership of Jordan to the White House. That should make you aggravated. Okay? So the history of war and aggression in this region, in addition to the constant threat by the Hamas and the Gaza Strip, as well as the potential terrorists in the West Bank with Hezbollah, has directly influenced more development of more Israeli technology. Uh, one of the things that they built was the RT uh, Aristat system. It's a surveillance balloon. Uh, which were used in Mexico to search for survivors uh, following a deadly earthquake in 2017. And I think you have one of those balloons in your, in your book. I will tell you a funny story about that. We were, when I was in Israel, we were in a, in a kibbutz, and we had our meeting in a bomb shelter. This bomb shelter, they were telling us that when they hear a siren, they have eight seconds to get inside this bomb shelter. Every house, every school, every playground has a bomb shelter. Uh, we, we can't wrap our heads around that. Uh, but just think when your kids, your grandkids go to school, there's bomb shelters there because if they hear a siren, they have eight seconds to get there or they're probably going to die. But you know what they do? They still go to school. There's a playground that we saw that had a, that right beside the sliding board, there was a bomb shelter. But you know what we also saw? Kids playing on the playground. That's their life. They're not terrified by what the enemy says they're going to do. Okay? They, that is a continuous life. But this was a funny story to me. It was we were in a caboose. We were in the bomb shelter. And he was telling us, you know, we were, we were 75 yards away from Hezbollah. 
and we saw their watchtower. They were pointing guns at us. That was that was comforting. But we also knew that the Israeli Defense Force was pointing more machine guns back at them, so I really wasn't worried. And before we get, we were in this bomb shelter, and they told us that, you know, when they, they, they're raising their kids, they tell them, if you see a toy that is not yours, do not touch it. Because what Hezbollah will do is they will throw toys with some kind of weaponry over the wall, and hopefully that a kid will pick it up and will blow them apart. So that's what they do. So if you see a toy that's not yours, do not touch it. If you see a balloon that is in the air and maybe lands, do not touch it. It's not a toy. Go get an adult. They'll inspect it, and if it's okay, then you can play with it. They tell us all this stuff. I'm listening. I'm soaking all this in. I'm like, man, that is some crazy, wild stuff. And he's like, well, let's go check out the, the wall with Hezbollah. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. Let's go do that. Let's go, let's go check out those guys. So we walked outside, and, and I snapped this picture. And I said, uh, sir, <laughs> there's a balloon out there. And I don't, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I, I should have told you all this before we came outside. He said, this is our our surveillance balloon. This is the Israeli surveillance balloon, and they, they, they fly this in the air, and they can survey um, all of Hezbollah, what, if there's any movement. And I thought, okay, whew, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what was about to happen. And uh, so that was, that was my funny story about the kibbutz and the, and the balloon. But Israel's shortage of natural resources also con contributes to the culture of innovation because despite its, its location in the oil-rich Middle East, uh, we always hear about the oil, how much oil is out in the Middle East. They have found none in Israel. Okay? So in order to, to survive and, and advance, they're more into innovation, and they have, since they've never discovered uh, oil, since it's especially entirely desert, um, one of the gas fields was discovered off of the Israeli coast. It's one of the largest deep water gas discoveries of the system. And uh, we just heard on the, in this video, we just watched Israel ranks at the top of foreign countries with companies listed on NASDAQ. If you can, you know, just don't think about that. Really just grab hold of it. Um, you know, I, we do things here at Harvest Church with excellence. I, I will put our, what we do with excellence, up to any, any church. But when you look at us compared to a cornerstone church in San Antonio that runs 10,000 in its first service and maybe 10,000 in its second service, you know, to look and see what we're doing in comparison, we run it with excellence. Just, we're not second place to anybody. I'll give y'all a hand for that. I'll give y'all a hand for that. And um, so to me, to, to wrap my mind around Israel being the smallest country and ranking third in NASDAQ next to the United States and China, that is impressive. That is a blessing that God is doing to the nation of Israel You'll see, I think, one of your next pages, you see the, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize winner since 19, I think it's 66. Uh, you see in the 1950s, they got a, a Nobel Peace Prize for the modern solar water heater. How many of you have a water heater in your house? If you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar. <clears throat> or, or you're trying to tell me that you, <laughs> that you bathe in cold water. Okay? Um, in the 1960s, they patented the drip irrigation method. Uh, in the 1970s, they produced the first electronic milk meter for dairy farms. In the 80s, pioneered the first antivirus computer software. In the 1990s, uh, instant messaging. How many of you ever used instant messaging? Well, we got some fibbers in this house. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> right now we got some. All right, instant messaging. How many of you... Uh, you know, if you ever travel anywhere, how many of you ever heard of a, um, an app called Waze? Anybody ever use Waze? Yeah, see, throw that, throw that hand up. Amen. Don't be scared. 
ways, if you've never, if you if you don't use ways and you travel, then you're probably the person that we're talking about on ways. Because what ways, <laughs> what ways is ways is a tech is a, is a is an app that gets you from point A to point B, and it will tell you things like there's a wreck up ahead, or um, there is. I love this one. There's police up ahead. I love that one. All right. That's when I know to just t take that foot off the gas. All right. They'll tell you where there's, I mean, all kinds of debris on the road. Uh, they'll tell you that there's, there's, a, there's, there's a car on the side of the road. They'll tell you all this kind of stuff. It'll give you the shortest, shortest way to get there, the fastest way to get there. All right. That was innovated in Israel. All right, that's all kinds of stuff. Nobel Peace Prize, if that, uh, what uh, Edward said, the USB flash drive. We use them here. You probably use them at home. Uh, if you don't know what in the world a flash drive is, it's that little stick that a lot of times people put it in a computer and then you can save stuff on it and you can pull it out and you got it right here in your hand and then you can open it up on another computer. It's just the wildest thing. All right, that, <laughs> that was an Israeli development. In the 2010s, they invented the robotic exoskeleton for paralegics. We just saw that. Um, they're world leaders in everything they do. They lead the world in it. That's the only country. It's the only country in the world that has more trees in it than it did 50 years ago. We're chopping them down and Israel's just growing them. All right. They're, they're the only Middle Eastern country where Christian population is increasing. That's the only, it's the highest ratio of college degrees, museums, startup companies per capita. Um, there is a, there's a place in Tel Aviv right near the airport, about 20 minutes from the airport, right beside Joppa where you'll, you'll be more uh, familiar with that with a man by the name of Jonah. Remember that? You also remember the story when, see, you've got to raise that hand. See, if, if you don't raise your hand, I think you're either bored or you're not listening to me. And, and I've got this thing going on in my eye, and I can't really see, so I just need some movement, okay? So, <laughs> so um, we, went to this, we went to this place called the Perez Center for Innovation. Perez was the, the actual, uh, the first president of the state of Israel. And he had this, this motto to dream big. And if you're not dreaming big, you're not dreaming. <laughs> I love dreaming big. I can't, I can't stand getting around people who think small. All right, I told you all the story. This wasn't from the Perez Center, but it's worth telling again because this is a good one. Uh, you remember when, I believe it was Arnold Palmer, went to the, to the nation of Jordan. And, and he went there to play golf. And the... The king, I think it was King Hussein at the time, asked Arnold Palmer, he said, you know, we are so honored that you are here in the, in the country of Jordan. What can we give you as our token of appreciation? And he's like, man, I, I really don't need anything. I mean, this is Arnold Palmer. I mean, he has Cadillacs named after him, for goodness sakes. And, and he's like, I, I'm good. He's like, just, just anything. Just, just, just there, we would be offended if we could not give you something from the nation of Jordan as our showing our appreciation. He's like, just, just give me a golf club. And he's like, okay. So he went home. He came back to the United States, and it was a few weeks. He gets a certified letter from FedEx. He has to sign it. And has a letter there from the, uh, the King, Jordan, uh, King Hussein from Jordan. And he said, you are now the proud owner of a 10,000-acre golf club. <laughs> see, what, see and, and this is what I'm trying to think. This is what I'm trying, and this is the whole point of this, is while we are so small-minded thinking about a golf club, he was thinking big. He was thinking a golf club. Okay? So that's why I don't like hanging around people who think small. So, so we, we stood out here at the Perez Center for Innovation. He has this huge sign that says, it's actually the, the, the back picture on my Facebook thing. It says, Dream Big. And I stood there and I told him, I said, take my picture right here where it says, Dream Big. Because that's how I dream. All right? I, I dream of whatever we are that we're going to multiply. And multi I don't like addition. I like multiplication. I want to dream big. And when you get around people who know how to dream big, Big things to start happening. You don't believe me? Let's check out the Perez Center.
After 20 years of meaningful work, the Paris Center for Peace opens a new chapter by launching the Israeli Innovation Center, along with its projects in peace education, health, environment, and business, advancing cooperation, trust, and mutual understanding. Here, innovation is the key to promoting dialogue among nations for peace, empowerment, and prosperity. Here, we will be moved by the unique story of Israel, the innovation nation, born with scant resources, with swamps in the north and deserts in the south, which became a nation in the forefront of technology, with leading inventions that have changed the world. We will salute Israel's past achievements and the events that shaped the innovation nation, paving the way for future generations. We will light a spark within every child and adult from Israel and abroad. This will be a place to create, to innovate, to advance tikkun olam, shared living, and peace. Lobby. The entrance hall will take us on a journey through the story of Israeli innovation and how it changed the world. The library. We'll continue to the unique virtual library where we'll use innovative methods to surf the information superhighway, discovering how curiosity and creativity become the human capital at the source of innovation. First floor. Going up one story, we'll learn how tiny Israel became the startup nation, filling us with pride and lifting our spirits to new heights. Information sharing technologies and interactive games will reveal the milestones that have made us what we are, an inspiring global innovation leader. Second floor. From here, we'll take a personal journey through virtual reality to see the future and the innovations of tomorrow. Visitors will be invited to take part in making the impossible possible on the road to a better future. Lower level. This is a showcase for contemporary Israeli innovation, the dreams, ideas, and initiatives that have become reality, a place to excite us as we encounter and experience the latest developments, an interactive laboratory of current Israeli innovation, all in one place, an incubator for aspiring entrepreneurs and innovators, offering workshops, brainstorming, and lectures. Together, we will establish the Israeli Innovation Center, a place from which every visit will emerge more optimistic and hopeful with the knowledge that each of them can help create a better future. So that is the Perez Center for Peace and Innovation. And that thing, it, it costs $8 to get in that. And it is the most spectacular building that we went to other than anything religious. Um, just to see the, the things that they are getting ready to do. There, there's, when you walk through there, the things that I, I think I've talked about some of them already. I was going to put some on the screen, but they've got the, remember I told you all about the patch they put on your arm for migraines and all that? That's there at that building. And uh, all, all kinds of stuff. One of the, the cool things was is they can take a cell, one little small cell from a cow, and create over 10,000 pounds of beef. Looks like beef, smells like beef, tastes like beef, because it is beef. But it's healthy. They can do the same thing with an ounce of milk. They can get an ounce of milk and make multiplied thousands of gallons of milk that will not, you ready for this, go bad. Israel, Israel, God told a man 4,000 years ago, if you'll move and obey me. If I had to modernize God's words to Abraham, it would be this. If you'll just listen to what I say and you'll do what I say, I'll bless your socks off. I think he's blessing his socks off. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, and I'm just glad to be grafted into this thing. I said, I'm just glad to be grafted into it. I'm glad to be a part of it. All right. We're going to spend the, the last part of class learning about uh, different uh, Israeli organizations. And after we watch these, we're going to discuss uh, what, what we saw. 
and this is, um, I believe the first one is about, it's called Israel Aid. Uh, it's just one of examples of one of the many Israeli organizations and companies working to make the world a better place. I want us to spend some time, just we're going to have two videos, and then we're going to wrap up. And um, let's get this. <laughs> It's a chilly morning here at the Israel-Gaza border. We're waiting for six children to come through the crossing. All of these children have heart problems and they're coming to Israel to have operations with an organization called Save a Child's Heart. This organization gives free heart operations to children all over the world. Without these operations, these children probably wouldn't make it into adulthood. What's amazing about what we're about to see is that this is happening all the time. It doesn't matter what the situation is with the conflict between Israel and Gaza. Thousands of children are coming across to Israel for treatment. Every Tuesday we have here at the Wolfson Medical Center a free cardiology clinic for children from the West Bank and from Gaza. 20, 30 kids come every Tuesday, no matter what's going on around, to be examined here at this clinic by the Israeli doctors of Save a Child's Heart. So the girl in the pink, she's here for the first time. From what's written here, she's six years old and she has a large defect in her heart. Ahmed Al Kadi, for example, he was very blue. And he had a very complex heart and he had surgery last month and he looks amazing. <laughs> The kids come scared. Some of them come for the first time here. They're all sick. They all know that they need help. So they see Israeli doctors working together with Palestinian doctors. They see other kids from Israel, from all around the world, treated all in the same way. And very soon after they come here, they're calming down and we have our volunteers who play with them. Some of them are having a really hard time to do anything, to play, to run, to, to do things as children. This is Adam. Adam uh, is a five months old boy from Gaza. He came due to a syndrome, Down syndrome, and a heart defect he was born with. It's a very big operation. We have to reshape both valves inside his heart, and he's about to be operated in the coming week. I was shocked. It's hard, very hard for me to have a baby with uh, this disease. And he told us about uh, the situation of uh, service children hearts. They help us in funding everything we need. Basically, these two procedures for these specific two children are very, very important because without that, they have no future. These procedures will literally save their lives. So uh, what we practically do, we are crossing the defect with this device. It's attached to a cable. And the device is two discs, so once we cross the defect, we open one disc and then the other one, so the device stands in its place. After a few months, the heart is covering the device with an endothelial tissue. It's like a Teflon tissue. And this is how it stays all her life, just inside her heart without doing any problems, just becoming part of her heart. Just now advancing the sheet, I take everything slowly back, maintaining the position of the device, it will not slip away. Tuck. Now it's reached its final position, and everything is closed. This is it. Practically once we close this defect, uh, it's closed for the rest of her life, and she has a normal heart. Means she's like all the other children with a healthy heart. Okay. 
we are operating today a child, five months of age, with Down syndrome, that suffers from a complex uh, cardiac anomaly, which is called the uh, AV canal. And that means that uh, the valves in his heart are misplaced and uh, are not functioning well. And on top of that, there are two holes inside of the heart. We are treating patients from Gaza since uh, Seven Child's Heart was inception. For us, it's very normal to treat a child because we consider child is a child is a child. We think once we treat everybody and even the, the children of our enemy, that would uh, promote peace. This is the true people of Israel that they seek peace in, in, in every way that we can. We just got out of Adam's heart operation. Uh, we were there for an hour and they're going to continue on for another few hours. Um, it's extraordinary sight. Uh, a tiny, a tiny little baby surrounded by all these doctors and all this equipment. And uh, the doctors, it's, it's like a dance. They're so well rehearsed. They know exactly what they're doing. But it's still a small baby on the table. And as a parent or a mother, you, you can't help but be impacted by that. So what's really amazing is that you have a small Gazan child being operated on by an Israeli surgeon. Um, and he has a Palestinian trainee beside him. And also in the room, there's a Tanzanian and an Ethiopian trainee too. And they're all from Save a Child's Heart. Save a Child of the Heart are responsible for complete financial covering to all patients coming from Gaza and also the patients coming from West Bank. Me and my colleague doctors here are brothers and working as teamwork. And there is no difference between the medical service uh, given to the Palestinian children and to, uh, to Israeli children. Adam is okay. His heart is uh, beating uh, better. I'd like to thank every single person who shared in, uh, uh, in getting Adam to ordinary life uh, and uh, getting uh, him uh, heart beating. I think what we are doing uh, make a difference uh, overall and uh, it's very important to promote the, the, the peace and the people coming together. Doctors have been performing surgery for centuries, but surgery in 2019 is a little bit different. Doctors are now relying on robots, lasers, and even augmented reality to save lives. Here are three Israeli tech companies that are changing the face of medicine. Mazor Robotics has created a robot that can perform, that's right, spinal surgery. It integrates advanced analytical tools, precision guidance, and 3D imaging technologies. Mazor means to heal in Hebrew, and that's precisely what the company is doing. המערכת היא מערכת רובוטית, וזה אומר דיוק יותר מאשר יד אנושית. באפשרותנו לבצע תכנון מקדים של הניתוח, והרופא שמבצע את התכנון בעצם יכול לראות את הניתוח עוד לפני שהוא התחיל. What happens when surgery meets augmented reality? Let's just say incredible possibilities for the field of medicine. Bionics has pioneered a visual platform for surgeons which uses augmented reality during surgery. The heart of the system is the augmented reality display that is used by the surgeons and provides a very high resolution stereoscopic imagery. All the data is projected to the surgeon in the very critical phases of surgery. 
innovation is part of Elbit's DNA, Bionics is a good example of how we leverage technology used in aviation to revolutionize the world of medical operation. Technology is all about the future, but when it comes to diagnosing a patient, the past is pretty important. At Zebra Medical Vision, we're teaching computers how to read and diagnose medical imaging scans at scale. We're using millions of CT scans, MRIs, X-rays, mammograms in order to teach computers how to detect specific findings that will serve clinicians and hospitals in improving patient care. Augmented reality and robots are less scary than you would think. And Israeli startups like Mazor Robotics, Bionics, and Zebra Medical Vision are closer than ever to discovering the next medical breakthrough, one surgery at a time. If you care, share. Well, that's the innovation of Israel. So uh, what, I, what I want us to do is, is starting, starting tonight, since we're starting to see the innovations, this is what your Bible says. Your Bible says, when he's talking, when he's giving the promise to Abraham, he said, I will bless those that bless you, speaking of Israel, okay? And all through, through the scripture, we'll, we can, I'll pull it up for you is that we were given the spiritual blessing. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, there, would, there would be no Christianity without Christ. Remember, that was lesson one, who was a Jew. All right, the 12 disciples were all Jews. Okay, the 120 in the upper room who was there on the day of Pentecost were all... Uh-huh. So we, we, we got in this thing by... Remember the olive branch... We were grafted in, okay, because we as Gentiles were given the spiritual blessing. Now we are required to give them a material blessing. That's what your Bible says, okay. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna we're gonna finish this up in the month of March, and we're gonna. That's why we're doing several classes. We're gonna. I want us to start thinking collectively as a church because I, me and Pastor Kim were talking about this with some of the leadership at Kufi this this past uh, last couple of days. I don't want it to be oh the pastor's decision or let's have a council meeting and we come up with it. You guys are here every Wednesday learning about the nation of Israel, the Israel course. I want us to be begin throwing some ideas. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, I, I'm not the I'm not the type of teacher who who wants you to you know you can't talk to anybody but me. I want you to talk to talk amongst yourself, talk amongst your peers, if you will. We've got to bless the nation of Israel. All right, that's just all there is to it. We've got to do it. We're first of all, it's a requirement. All right, he told us because we've been given the spiritual blessing, we're now required to give them a material blessing. So we're gonna we're gonna bless the nation of Israel, and I don't want to I don't want to send. 30 checks to 30 different organizations. I'm, I'm the type, I'd rather send one big one to one. I want to bless them, okay? And uh, we're going to be talking about all kinds of innovations as we're going along, but you talk amongst yourselves, and then we'll talk at the end of the, of the course where we're going to put our money at. Because uh, I, I want to, and it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say, and I want you to understand this, all right, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian to the core. Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. Throw me some organ and I'll shout. And, and, you know, but the Bible, this is where a lot of the churches are getting all messed up. The Bible doesn't say if you'll bless the church, I'll bless you. He says if you bless Israel, I'll bless you. So it doesn't mean, and, I, and there's some pastors, they won't do this because unless it's a Christian organization, bless God. That's not what the Bible says. So if we want Bible results... Y'all have heard this before, huh? If you want Bible results, you do what? What the Bible says to do. So we're going to bless the nation of Israel. That's all that's, that's, all that's going to happen. We're going to do it. Um, there is Innovative uh, Innovation Africa. There's uh, Save a Child's Heart that we just watched. There's Israel Aid that's available. There's Made in Israel, the, the medicine, all types of stuff that, that is going on in Israel that we're, that we're going to... We're going to I want y'all to talk about it, and then we're going to collectively come together, and we're going to start blessing the nation of Israel. 
and and I was I was thrilled to be able to talk to to um, one of the oh my goodness I am past 7:30 I am so sorry I was I, I was thankful to be able to have the opportunity to give them a testimony of of my dad's church who um, smaller church than us and. They blessed the nation of Israel, and before the check could even get to the nation of Israel, Verizon Wireless called and said, we're going to put a, a, a tower on your property, and we're going to give you $5,000 a month. They blessed Israel again. They blessed Israel again, and they got their church, church bus for next to nothing. All right? It happens. All right? It happens. So that's what we got to do. All right, we're going to come off the wallet. We're going to come off the hip. We're going to bless the nation of Israel, and then we're going to we're going to be blessed. I don't know how he's going to bless us back, but all I know is, is the book says is he'll bless us, because blessings not always money. All right, it could be somebody comes in and says, you know what? I just feel led to give Harvest Church a brand new building. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, give me a ceiling that's at least ten foot tall, and I'll be happy. All right. So we're going to bless the nation of Israel. Are we in agreement with that? Amen. 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 Stand with me. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ some praise tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your promise that if we will bless your, your people, God, that that blessing will come back to us, God, and we take hold of that. God, I ask you, Lord, as this, as this congregation, those that are watching online, as we begin to collaborate together on what, what innovative... Uh, company, Lord, that we want to bless, God. We ask you, Jesus, that you would just begin to touch our hearts, touch our minds, give us wisdom, God, in which direction to go. And Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would just continue to keep your hand upon your people as you already promised. And we give you praise for that. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem in Jesus' name. And somebody shout amen.